<laughs> yeah, it's a girl in char and I can't lie today man is tired I'm just low energy so I'm not gonna be doing all of the exuberant elaborate stuff I normally do in the videos let's just go straight to the point in today's tired tutorial I'm gonna be showing you how to make this inflated text kind of thing in blender and I want you guys to go crazy with it change the materials do whatever but I'm gonna show you how to how to get to this point anyway all right so without further ado just open up blender so in a new blender scene we're gonna keep the cube hit tab select the top face and the bottom face hit x and delete the faces so we've got this tube shape i'm gonna add a modifier add a solidify modifier and just increase the thickness um to minus like whatever minus 16. Now I'll hit H to hide that, we're going to hit Control A and add some text and type whatever you want. I'm just going to type what I always type, intro, here we go. Over here on the settings of the text, we're going to change the font. I went with a bubbly font to see like your fonts more clearly. Click these four triangles, squares, and have a look. I'm going to use Fraxer to totally fat open font under the geometry properties we can extrude our text a little bit maybe like this much I'm gonna increase the character spacing just so that these letters can be moved around later perfect so once you're happy with your text right click and convert to mesh now as you can see some options have disappeared that's because we've created an instance of a mesh as opposed to a vector text object so you can't change the font from here on out, um, so you just got to stick with it. Right, so we're going to add a modifier, we're going to add a remesh modifier. Now this is the part where I'd suggest if you have a older CPU or you don't have that much RAM, I'd suggest not making your voxel size too small because this will cause complications and crashes later on in the process. So adjust this number until you get a good amount of detail in your text. Um, so I'm going to wait till that little hole becomes a bit more prominent. But I don't want to go too low, but also I don't want it to be too pixelated. I'll go for 0 0.009. Just in case I get the wrong voxel size, I'm going to just hit Shift D. Move this to the side to create a little copy. Just in case I need it. You never know if you will need it. Go back to the active object and we're going to apply this. Hit Alt H, this will unhide our original cube. Hit 7 on the numpad to bring up the top view. Hit Tab and select one voxel, then hit the L button a few times until it selects. Then hit the G button and you can resize these um, components to fit into your little box thing perfectly. Make sure that none of your letters are intersecting with any other letters. But I would suggest you try and fill up any of these neutral gaps because the bigger the gap, the more difficult it will be for the letters to squish together. So line that up perfectly. If we just bring our shape to the top, you'll notice some of them might be like a little bit taller than others. That's because when you resize them, you also increase how big they are. So if I hit tab, I can just um, bring these down as well by resizing them like that. Scale everything up because bigger objects just have like the physics just it works out better for them. Hit control A and apply the scale to the box and apply the scale to the object. Bring our text slightly into the crevice and actually I think if we increase the width of the text it will allow the inflation to have more impact on the text. Okay cool, now we're ready to move on to the physics part. So select your box first, also we're going to apply the solidify modifier. Over here in the physics properties we're going to turn this into a collision object. That means any properties with ongoing physics applied to them will collide with this object. Then onto our text, 
Let's make sure we've got all our modifiers applied. In the physics properties, we're gonna add a cloth simulation. Also, make sure that your animation head is on zero frames. This will let you change these properties quicker. Um, so we're gonna go and tick the pressure box. This will allow the object to inflate. I'm gonna start off with a pressure of four. If you click custom value, the target volume, I'll go with two and the pressure scale will go with three. These are all arbitrary numbers, depending on the scale of your object, on the type of scene, you're gonna need to play with these numbers. It's inevitable, like, it's mad if it comes out the way you want it looking the first time around. Next, we are gonna go to field weights, bring the gravity down to zero. This means our object's not gonna like be falling while it's inflating. And then lastly, I'm gonna go on cache. So the cache essentially lets your computer simulate the action you're letting your computer breathe, do the calculations, and then look at the results later. So I'm just gonna do a cache of about, I feel like eight frames is enough. That's what I found before. But again, with all these numbers, if you're not getting the results you want yet, or you feel like it's not fully inflated, then definitely extend your cache length. Also, let's quickly change the quality to six. Actually, I'll just change it to eight. This would give our animation a bit more finesse, you understand? Um, and the last thing, we're going to go under the collisions properties and change the collision um, quality to free. Self collisions, tick that. That is going to maybe kill your computer a little bit. Right, this is another save checkpoint. Control S, save this before you hit the bake button. And down here, this number will probably very gradually count up to eight. This is in live time. My computer's literally been melting in the summer's heat, so she's not what she used to be, but it's doing it relatively quickly. And after this, we can look at the results and then tweak the numbers if they're not exactly how you want them to be. Cool, so we've got up to eight now and we can play that through. Hmm, interesting. We get the inflated kind of like texture that's looking really cool. And honestly, it worked out really nicely first time round. If you're getting strange results, it's probably because you're, you've scaled your object a bit different to mine. So what you can play around with in the settings, before you change any settings, you just gotta delete the bait. Over here in pressure settings, might increase the pressure to six and see what that gets me. Hit bake again. I'm wanting something to do. I've got a Kindle now, so I'm just gonna read while it's baking. Oh look, the bake's done. And with the pressure increase, you can see now it fills up that little gap there that it wasn't filling up before. And honestly, I really like the way it's looking. As you move along the frames, you can pick the frame you like the best. Go along frame by frame and pick the one that most speaks to me. I really like this one because you've got some nice creasing on the eye, creasing on the T. When you're happy with that, you right click and convert that to object now in another tutorial i might show you how we can animate this but honestly like i said low energy today so that's what you're gonna get so make sure you're on the frame that you like the most right click it and convert it to a mesh and now you'll see if you move scrub along the timeline nothing's happening because we've decided that this is the this is what i'm talking about this is <laughs> This is the frame that we like the most. So now it's actually an editable object. If you hit tab, you'll see all our topology. Beautiful. And last thing we're gonna do to the mesh itself for now is we're just gonna add a subdivision. Actually, control S again, add a subdivision surface. Because we didn't have too many voxels at the start, we've got room to add a carpool viewport subdivisions but in your render i'd bumped it up to like six perfect so now we've got our inflated gooey mm, delicious text and before we go any further i just want to talk about the sponsors of today's video this video was sponsored by skillshare an online learning community where you can pick up thousands of niche interesting skills 
at the click of a button. If you've got some spare time on your hands and you want to pick up a new hobby or you might want to diversify your stream of income by picking up new skills, Skillshare is the place to go to learn these disciplines taught by hobbyists and industry professionals. Recently I've been trying to get away from my desk and pick up a hobby that means I can sit on my sofa watch a little bit of Corridor Digital and make something while I'm sat there. I'm currently following a class by Vincent Williams called Knitting 101, Everything You Need to Knit with Confidence. And honestly, it's given me the confidence to start knitting again. I used to do it as a kid and I've just been wanting to pick it up again. If you'd like to learn more or try out Skillshare today, then the first thousand people to click the link in my description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much again Skillshare for sponsoring this video. It really Really just keeps me on my toes and keeps me making stuff for you guys now back to the tutorial so let's start making this look funky firstly click the box hit X and delete it we don't need that anymore I think we're gonna turn this shape round so we're gonna turn this round type in 90 just to make that orthographic spring up a little bit now if you hit zero on your numpad you're going to see we've still got a rectangular box on the output properties change this to 1920 and hit n go to view camera to view and move your camera around i think the lens is a bit too wide so click camera down here in camera we're gonna make the focal length around like 100 or so or so around 130 is nice and then just adjust that. Might open a new window up here. And just grab my camera and bring it forward by hand over here. Because sometimes when you scroll, you kind of lose a bit of the fidelity. Once you're happy with your distance from the camera, just hit N, go back into this view panel and uncheck that box. That way when you're moving around in camera, you don't accidentally disrupt. So I'm gonna keep this on camera mode, um, rendered mode up here. And just, we're gonna really just kind of operate in this area here. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just delete these inflated areas, which I'm not really liking too much. We hit tab, we can just go into edit mode and just select those roughly like that. Do it in wireframe mode. Select those again and hit X vertices. Obviously it looks a bit weird that this is kind of open, but Remember, we're just getting this view, so it's all good in the hood. Um, that's looking good for me. Let's start working on some materials. In this panel, we're gonna change this to shader editor, change objects to well, and I'm just gonna go into rendered view over here in that window. I'm gonna open another window actually up here and go back to 3D viewport. Where's that light gone? There's a light inside here, I think. I'm just gonna delete that and change the background to black. So now we've got a complete black, black, black. Ah! Now we've got a completely black background and it needs some lighting, it needs some mood, it needs a little bit of, mm, you know what I mean? It needs something, like it's just lacking. Add a area light. Scale that up a bit, rotate it. And remember, these objects are huge relative to the scene, so we also need to adjust our light um, wattage accordingly. Try 500, boom. Okay, now we're seeing a little something going on. This lighting, arbitrary, change it. I don't care, whatever you do, just make this tutorial yours. Do you understand? All right, let's do some texture work now because this white bubble is looking boring. Let's make it a rubbery, rubbery texture. So change this world icon to object icon and selecting your text, we're gonna add a new texture. If you've got Node Wrangler enabled, if not, you can just go to edit preferences, add-ons and check that you have Node Wrangler enabled, just click that. 
then hit Control T. This will bring up a bunch of things on the side, but we're gonna delete this image texture. Hit Shift A and we're gonna add a noise, noise texture and a color ramp. And connect those accordingly, vector to vector, factor to factor. Ah! Factor to factor is color and plug that into your roughness. First thing you're gonna want to pick a color that you want to use. Oh, oh, that was an accident, but you know what? I like it. I like it. I do Let's go with it. Let's go with it. Normally, we just turn the roughness down, boom, call it a day. To be fair, that's looking delectable. However, let's just add a little bit more something, something to it. Oh yeah. Also, we are in Eevee right now. Eevee is amazing if your computer can't really handle cycles um, and if so just click all these things on just to enhance what Eevee can do but in this case I'm going to be working with cycles and if you do have a GPU switch that to GPU compute it just looks a lot more delicious you know what I mean so honestly this is looking nice already might just add another ah I thought I wasn't recording. <laughs> that feeling is oh, that feeling is horrific. Another story. I glued my eye shut the other day with super glue, but we're not talking about that. I'm just not having a good. I'm just having a hard time right now. Do you understand? Like, we're not gonna talk about the super glue thing. Why did I even bring that up? This isn't. This isn't therapy. I'm not gonna just offload my problems onto the internet. People trying to learn something. Like, this isn't the time or place, Steph. Come on. I should know better, I'm sorry. All right, so I just wanna eat it. Don't you wanna eat it? One last thing I think we should do is um, just add some, so play around with what these things I actually added in here. So connect color into roughness. You're gonna notice this gone really musky for a second. That's because we need to modify, play around with these um, color ramps a little bit. Sorry, I just, <laughs> You have to unwrap your shape first, UV unwrap. So I'll quickly hit tab, A to select all the vertices, U and then unwrap that. Cool. And that way the UV that you've unwrapped should, these things and that should apply to that. Let me tell you something, let me tell you something. Bro, all I'm saying is you're gonna be playing around with these settings for a minute until you see it appear and then once this appeared you'll be like right okay i get it now oh i think i see something over here so you see how this smudginess is coming up now see how we get these smudges well we can actually increase the detail to make the smudges a bit more like dirty looking if that makes sense so see how our plastic has kind of got this this dirty texture to it. Adjusting these two colors um, affects the kind of like the way that that dirty overlay noise texture is interacting with the original base roughness. I'm really butchering this explanation, but there's better places you can go online to learn the semantics of what I'm trying to talk about. But realistically, I just want I just want it to be quite shiny, but also kind of dirty, so. So I think I'm kind of happy with how this is starting to look. And honestly, go ham. Change the colour of the lights if you want. This looks like an unripe plantain. Alright, I am I am so tired, so that's why I'm going to leave this. When you're happy, save it. Go into your render settings change the samples to something like actually decent thousand Ooh. thousand samples go off solid before you render i quickly changed that six that we had in render to a more manageable four and then i saved my work a bunch of times f12 Looking cute, looking cute. I love the way this has turned out. And to be honest, my work here is done because that's all I really want to show you guys. Please take this, make it your own, make it greater, make it more amazing than what I've showed you guys here. Um, yeah, so 
that's the end of the video that's the end of the tutorial i hope you guys learned something and i will be back at some point with some more blender stuff but yeah but in the meantime everyone take care stay blessed i will catch you guys very very soon peace